I never would have thought that it was so hard to do nothing. Time is dragging on like rubber, and the brain is messed up because of emptiness. If you have ever dreamed of a carefree life where you do not need to do anything, then you better drop this stupid dream. My name is Rhonda, and I want to tell you about how I fell into the trap of my own laziness. I just agreed to an experiment that also drove me crazy. So guys, here's my story about how I was doing nothing for several days and at the same time was earning money. As for me, I am a very lazy person. In fact, I have a lot of talents. I draw perfectly on a graphics tablet, I have a developed imagination, and I constantly create comics in my mind. I can easily learn foreign languages, and I am also good at writing fiction stories. The only problem is that I'm too lazy to develop all this. When I sit down to draw another picture using Photoshop, I become even too lazy to draw lines, choose colors, and paint shadows correctly. Once, I started writing a book in my mind. I created the whole world and its characters. But as soon as I got down to business, I lost enthusiasm on the fifth page. I also tried to learn foreign languages several times, but I didn't go beyond the basics. And that's the story of my life. In fact, it never worried me. But it bothered my parents, who always considered me a promising child who could reach heights if I stopped being lazy, at least. They were constantly lecturing me and saying that I would ruin my future this way. But I just brushed it off. They are always exaggerating things and dramatizing. I've always believed that it's possible to make money without breaking a sweat. Well, why not? TikTok is full of bloggers who do nothing, but at the same time, they earn millions. Why are they able to do it, but I'm not? I lived with this motto until a turning point occurred in our family. Due to the crisis in the factory where my parents worked, their salaries were cut. There they started having strikes, mass layoffs, and even lawsuits. But the authorities could do nothing. They just said that there was no money available. My parents could not quit because they had me, as well as several loans. They asked me to help and to get some part-time job to work after classes, since all the money was spent on food and paying off loans. I even found a job in the cinema, but I didn't manage to stay there for a long time because at some point, I became too lazy to go to work. At first, I was making excuses and saying that I had some fictitious diseases, and then I just stopped caring at all. So, I was fired. Well, I didn't really want to earn a living. I was just used to spending my pocket money, and I was totally okay with that. Why do I have to go somewhere else after classes? Why can't my parents find another job for themselves? These questions were bothering me when I was lying on the couch in the living room, while my mother, after a work shift, was preparing dinner for us. It didn't even occur to me to help her. Oh, what a fool I used to be. My parents didn't say anything to me. They probably realized that it was useless. Or maybe they were ashamed to ask their teenage daughter to toil and moil at work, as she already had enough problems with her studies. But one way or another, I still decided to earn some extra money. In fact, I even found a wonderful vacancy. This was some kind of experiment, and participation in it involved generous payment. The requirement was to do nothing for a whole week. If a person could cope with this, they were supposed to earn as much as $7,000. Wow, this was totally okay for me. It was literally a dream job that required lying lazily and making good money at the same time. But there was an addition which said that if a person gave up on one of the days, then they would not receive anything. This is a breeze, I thought, and responded to the vacancy. And I was hired. After signing all the papers, I was taken to a spacious room where everything possible could be found a TV, a powerful computer with a whole collection of video games, a PlayStation, the latest iPhone model, and even paints with canvas and a whole library of books. In short, there one could have great fun. But I was forbidden to use all of it. I could only lie, sit, go to the toilet, wander around the room, and that's it. Well, all right. I was okay with all the conditions. The first day went well. I didn't even notice how it had passed. All day I was lying on the couch, dozing, thinking about something, then dozing again, and then went to bed when the hands of the clock were already showing midnight. But the second day was actually much harder. 
I no longer wanted to just lie down because my whole body was numb. It's good that I was allowed to warm up as well. Otherwise, I would have definitely died from the heaviness that I felt in my muscles. But after warming up, I realized that I did not know how to hold out doing nothing for more than a few hours. Everything around was attracting me. Suddenly, I wanted to read the entire library, play, or draw. Well, I was even ready to clean up there. But instead of this, I was sitting on the sofa and staring at one point on the wall, sometimes glancing at the clock, waiting for midnight to come to go to bed. But time seemed to have stopped. The clock hands were moving really slowly, and I was gradually going crazy with idleness. But this terrible day still came to an end, and I went to bed thinking about what to do tomorrow. And I was doing nothing. I was just walking around and looking at the small details of different objects. I even tried to drag out breakfast, lunch, and dinner so as not to sit around doing nothing. I could just eat. Ugh, but it didn't really save me. In the end, I burst into tears as I was very lonely and sad. I wanted to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk at least with someone, with my friends and parents whom I missed terribly. By the evening, I'd counted all the books on the shelf, and there were as many as 48 of them. Also on the shelf, there were 36 paint cans and 32 comics. And I also counted all the flowers on the wallpaper. There were 2,036 of them. After such a discovery, I began to seriously worry about my sanity. It seemed to me that I began to slowly go crazy. On the fourth day, I began to realize that I used to behave like a complete idiot towards my parents, whom I refused to help. They worked and came home tired. After that, they were doing all the household chores while I was just lying on the couch. My thoughts vanished when the computer turned on. At first, I thought that I had completely lost my mind and was imagining all this. But that was not the case. It really started working. Oh no, are there ghosts here? I started shivering and began to look around in panic, hoping to see objects flying in the air. But everything turned out to be much simpler. The people who carried out this experiment could remotely turn on all the devices. These were they who turned on the computer. Huh, did they think I was going to fall into this trap? As soon as I turned away from the computer, I was constantly trying to turn towards it again and even unconsciously came up to it in order to at least press a button on the keyboard or move the mouse. And then my favorite video game, The Witcher 3, started there. Oh no, I wanted to play my favorite Witcher so much. I was fascinated by the screensaver and constantly tried to sit down in a chair near the computer and enjoy the game, but I had the willpower to resist it. I was lying on the couch with my eyes shut, listening to music from the start menu and almost crying. The experiments did not stop there. The next day, a man came into my room and began to draw right in front of me. There was the second easel nearby, and I really wanted to paint or do something at least, not just sit on the couch and stare at the clock, the ticking of which was terribly annoying me. Once I almost broke it, but... Unfortunately, I was not allowed to damage the equipment. I could smell the paint, heard the alluring noise of the brush on the canvas, and even came up to the easel and grabbed the tube of paint. At some point, I didn't care about anything, from money and poverty in my family to the days wasted in this box. I wanted to paint. And then I pulled my hand sharply. Well, I have already been through so much. The last thing I needed was to give up. Five days were behind, and only two of them were ahead. It would be a shame if I had given up at that point and lost all my progress. I got back to the sofa, hugged the pillow, and watched with envy as the person was drawing. I couldn't sleep even at night because I had a lot of energy. I closed my eyes for only a couple of hours, and then again was spending my day aimlessly. Because of this, I had a headache, my thoughts were often messed up, I could barely keep my eyes open and felt sluggish during the day. But at night, I had some strange influx of energy. This night was especially difficult, as I was able to sleep only half an hour. And in the morning, breakfast and migraine pills were brought to me. I tried to sleep during the day, but I failed again because a man was invited into the room. He sat down next to me and began to read Harry Potter. Oh no. I indicated in the questionnaire that I had not finished it, and the person was actually reading the last pages. 
<laughs> I was so eager to know how the story of the characters ended that I was ready to snatch this book from him and read everything myself. At home, I stopped just in the middle because of laziness. And at that moment, I wanted to reread it just to keep my mind busy. The man closed the book and looked at me shocked. What a story, he exclaimed and handed me the book. I grabbed it, started flipping its pages till the end, and then suddenly threw it on the floor. They almost succeeded in disrupting the experiment. But I am not a wimp. Only one day and a half was left for me to spend in this box. I'm not going to risk everything for the sake of some book. Actually, the last day was not as terrible as all the previous ones. Although time passed much slower due to the anticipation and impatience to finally get out of there. But I was just lying and even managed to sleep for a few hours during the day. But at night, I was constantly wandering and watching the clock, waiting for the moment when it would show 8 a.m. And then time X came. I finally got out of that little hell. You have no idea how glad I was to see my parents. I hugged my mom and dad tightly and began kissing them, saying how much I missed them and how much I had changed. I didn't care about being tired. And on the same day, I found a job in a cafe to help my parents with money. I also tidied up the whole house, which I had never done before. Usually, I only cleaned my room and living room and did it really poorly. But then I was rubbing almost every corner until it started shining. And this brought me real pleasure. My parents were shocked while watching me because I didn't let them do anything. By the way, I even stopped dropping everything that I was doing halfway through and brought everything to the end. As a result, my picture in Photoshop was finally finished. I wrote not five, but 15 pages of the book and wasn't going to give up. I was even learning languages every evening for an hour. I got a real thrill from this, and I tried not to be as lazy as before anymore. And so it happened that I earned as much as $7,000 for idleness. But in the end, along with the money, I received something more valuable. That is a life lesson. Laziness does not lead to anything, only to stagnation. You can do nothing, but not all the time. It's better to move forward and develop. Would you be able to do nothing for a whole week? Give your answers in the comments. Click on the thumbs up button below the video and share it with your friends. Oh, and share it with your friends. Oh.